Hi, this is Tony Stanislavski, and I'm going to give, create a series of videos on Google+. Uh, these videos uh, should help you understand a little bit more detail uh, how Google+, Plus works, what you can do with it, and maybe answer some of your questions that you might have as you become a user of it. Uh, in March, uh, at the faculty at MATC will be going to Google and the whole suite of applications that are available. Google+, Plus will be one of these uh, that are available and hopefully will be used more within the enterprise uh, of MATC. So this first one is just a quick overview. You just saw that somebody posted to, uh, to my timeline. I am right now at my home timeline, which means I am not uh, filtering any of the posts, whatever is being posted, I would see within my timeline. Which notice up here is I have friends, family, acquaintances, following, and then more. And I'll come back to that when we discuss uh, circles. You have a Google profile, and here is where you can fill out uh, the stuff. Uh, it shows your posts, the posts that you're being made, who you hung out with. I hung out with Larry Domini this morning. I did a hangout with my online students this morning. And so all of this is in my posts um, and my timeline. I have an about page that I can edit, and up here I can edit the profile, and that's where I can go ahead and then add all the information that I want to make public. It's very important in this day and age that you have a filled out Google profile since Google gives preference to uh, your profiles. I, I also have multiple profiles. I have one for Tony at MATC. I have my personal one. And coming in March, I'll have a third one. Um, so it's just the way it is with you, you get adding additional accounts. If you want to change your profile picture, here's where you have the ability to change your pro profile picture from your photos, photos of you, web camera, however you want it to be. So that's that's profile, and it's pretty kind of self-explanatory. It just takes some time and effort for you to fill it out. I have photos here. Um, I have my iPhone connected with my Google Plus account, and so it automatically instantly uploads all my photos from my from my uh, iPhone, uh, but it doesn't share them automatically, but it gives me the ability to share them. If I were to log into my other account, it would uh, create the photos and upload them there too. Um, I have all my YouTube videos that I've created here under YouTube, and then anything that I've plus one, which I'll explain in a second. So that's the profile, and again, it just takes some time as, as you go through it. Just like Facebook too, you can enter uh, a name of seeing how your profile might be viewed by others or how it would look to the public. My suggestion is, is to fill out your Google profile and have it be public because this is how people will find you and notice you on Google and it's a good way to establish your professional persona. Uh, explore is just that. You can explore different trend, what tr what's trending on Google. You can look for pages. What's in to find people or pages that you could follow uh, if you chose to. I'm not going to spend very much time on that. Uh, that you can look at and um, figure it out on your own. Uh, events, we can add a Hangout event, you'll see, and schedule them and add peop the people, to people to them or uh, um, people or circles of people. You can view your ca calendar. Uh, and you can share instantly in party mode. I, this looks already new to me. I've never seen this party mode area. Um, but as when MATC goes all to Google, uh, it might be fun. Um, but again, events are basically what's cool about events is you can post them. People can uh, can uh, reply whether or not they're going or maybe going. Um, I've used events basically for my Hangouts that I conduct with my online students. But as MATC uh, goes to Google. My guess is that events will be used more and more. Um, if you on your calendar, uh, an event that you create will automatically be published to your calendar. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do with it. Um, Hangouts again. Uh, I will do a. I will do a uh, another screencast just dedicated to Hangouts. Uh, communities. I will do another screencast just dedicated to communities. Um, again, photos. This is my instant upload. Um, that automatically goes. You'll notice that none of them are shared, but if I want to share them, I can click on them. As you maybe know, my wife broke her wrist over Christmas, and this was her first time driving. Um, local, uh, it shows me what's, go what's on around me, and it's tied into Yelp uh, for reviews, and I'm out here right now in Mequon, and so it's telling me some of the places that 
are around me that I could go to and check out and things like that. I'm going to skip circles for a second because that's the one thing that I'm going to end with. The concept, there's games, and that's the games tab, very much like Facebook, but it's isolated. And then there's more with Google Pages, which are similar to what a Facebook page is for an organization, a business, uh, uh, you know, a nonprofit, uh, um, uh, those kind of things. You could go ahead and make a page for that. Um, not all that relevant right now for how we're using um, Google+. So the big thing that I want to end with is circles. And circles, you'll notice the way the, the concept of which Google, the way Google Plus works, let me just go back to home for a second, is you follow somebody. So for example, I, I'm going to look for somebody that I'm currently not following. Um, let's see. I'm not following uh, Therese, I believe. And if I add her, I can add her to one of my circles. So think of it this way. When you follow somebody, okay, they exist as, a, as your generic follow, you, you generically follow them. After that, what you're able to do is you're able to organize them into different circles. And you're able to create a circle on your own if you want, or you're able, Google has some built-in circles that already exist. And uh, the other thing is, is you can share the circle with other individuals within the enterprise, and I'll show you that in a second too. But what you'll notice is I'm, I use, I've been using Google Plus extensively with my online, with our online accelerated uh, students for the last two years. And so here's a circle that exists with my online fast track from for this spring. And when I click on it, it shows all of the individuals who are part of that circle. Now what they've done is, remember that they exist out there. I've grouped them into this circle, okay? And so what ends up happening within that circle is I'm able to then post content to those specific individuals where it shows up on their timeline. Now, if I've shared the circle, they can also go to that circle and see the same content that I'm sharing. Now, if I took those students and put them in multiple circles, which I could do, I can organize. People can be part. You can take an individual. You can filter them into multiple circles. Then they, you would be able to see. They would, they would be, you would be able to see or filter the content by that by that circle. And here's what I mean by that. So up here, if I go up here, I have you know my friends. These are these are some of the things that were that were this. I think a friends is an existing Google one. My family, uh, that's my nephew. So anytime I my nephew posts, if I click on family, I can see what he says. There's acquaintances, which are uh, some of the Google things and people that I know on Google and and through social media and things like that. And then there's people who I'm just following, meaning. And what you'll notice when I when I click on following, I have a lot of things here like. I'm following Google Chrome. I'm following the YouTube channel. They're not necessarily individuals, but they're people I'm following. And then you'll notice here are some of all the circles that I created. So for example, when I click on Online Fast Track Spring 2013, those are the people who are all part of the circle. And here I have, I have all the students that I created, created that, I, that I put in this circle. When I click to post something, it automatically limits that post to the group of people within that circle, meaning all the rest of the people who I follow on Google Plus will not have access to this post. Okay, Only the people within this circle that I've created and who I followed will see this information. Now, if I choose to change that, I could. I could click on here, and what you'll notice is I could make it public, meaning that it would be a, a, uh, out there and anybody could see it. And again, um, I, I encourage you to get active even in public when you find stuff you can share. Um, I can also limit it to my domain. Now, this is my personal domain, my Google domain. When In March, when MATC goes to uh, Google, there will be a domain information for you know, Mock Area Technical College. So if I only want to share it within people who belong to that domain, I could. And then I also can pick other circles. So, in, and even more impressively, 
if I wanted to share my online Fast Track 2013 and I want to share with my also online Fast Track 2012, if I can find it, um, online Fast Track 2012, I'm now sharing that content with the people in those who I have contained in those two circles. Now, they may have me in a circle. They may have me in an individual circle. They may not have everybody in my circle in their circle. That's why this share the circle is important because once I share the circle, then they're able to take the content, those people who are in that circle, they're able to create a circle of their or their own locally and then save, you know, share that, save that circle and post to the same group of people that I'm posting to when I post to online fast track 2013 or 2012. So it's, it, what it allows me to do is, uh, you know, if you think of it like email, um, I'm putting in a group of people and then broadcasting it to those group of people. And you'll also notice that I can also send an email to that group of people at the same time. I can also add individuals uh, individually. So if I wanted to add Larry to my circle, I could add Larry. And now Larry is not actually part of this online Fast Track Spring 2013. He's actually on the outside of it. But he would see then the post that I'm posting. So I could go ahead and add other circles and even other individuals uh, to my posting. Um, for for posting to Google Plus, okay, and even if I click on individuals, here's the people that 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 you have access to. So it's really a cool way. Now, again, like I said, if I want to see just the posts from that from that from people who are in that particular circle locally. So, for example, I have IT faculty. I can look and see all the posts that came from the people who I have in the circle as IT faculty. Uh, Mohammed's not a faculty, he's a dean, but I've lumped them all together, okay? So it's like a filter. And if I go back and, you know, let's say I want to see who, you know, I have listed as students in a circle, these are my students that I can see their posts. So I, I think probably the easiest way sometimes to understand circles, especially from a viewership, from a viewing, uh, you know, to broadcast like an email, like putting multiple people in a group and broadcasting it. But from a viewing standpoint, I'm filtering the people who I see the post for. So again, when I go to online fast track two th 2013, I'm seeing any of the posts that uh, show up. Now, there's one other really important thing that I'll end with, and that's up here under the notification bar. Okay, and what you'll see is. If I, if I go up here, I can go show nothing in your home feed, boom, boom. They recommend this. They do this. They do this. I have, for my online students, also subscribed to notifications for all new posts. I will, I will create another uh, screencast on notifications and some of more, the more details. But what happens when I have it all the way up here is that when you go into your settings, you're going to see notifications, and you, I have them all turned on meaning that I get a notification on my phone, I get sent an email, uh, everything. And what's really cool about Google Plus is you can uh, individualize how you want to use it, whether you enjoy going and staying on the site all day or whether you live in Gmail or email. And actually, if you have it set to a notification for email, you can respond right from that email, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, reply and be part of the conversation right from an email. You can even post to that uh, circle through an email. All right. So I kind of live both, but I don't. I have the notifications for online fast track. Now, what you'll notice, like if I go to IT faculty, well, there I have it too because that's important. If I go to uh, if I go to technology here, you'll notice that I just have it on the. The third, the third button. I don't want to get notified when everybody's posting in that group. Okay, um, you know, if I go to sports, uh, the same thing. I have it on the recommended. But for groups that are involving either faculty or especially my students, I have that notification tab 
uh, set all the way up. So like if I go to online fast track 12, you'll notice there it gets notified and I get a notification and I'll show you this in another screencast for uh, video and uh, I mean for on your phone mm -hmm. and through email. Um, again, one of the things to stress is uh, Google Plus has an awesome application for iPhone and Android, iPad, Nexus 7, and um, I, you know, I want to get notified. So I'll show you how to set those notifications and what to do that in a in a next in the next series of screencasts on Google Plus. But I think that's a good introduction. I'm going to post this to YouTube. So if you have any questions, please ask me on the YouTube channel, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the screencast. Thank you, and goodbye.